Most of the readers around the world fell in love with classics and this genre is very important because classic books shaped a great share of not only their own culture but also the world. In today's video, we are not going to talk about the features of classic literature, but I will come to that subject in the future videos for sure. Without waste of time, let's go to 21st short classic books I wish I've read sooner and you can read them in one day or at most two days. The first is Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka. This is one of the most famous short classics of modernist thought and ways of living. Metamorphosis is the story of a salesman, Gregor Samsa, who wakes one morning to find himself transformed into a huge insect and then struggles to adjust to this new condition. Metamorphosis is a complex novella and critics explain this piece in every possible framework. But what can I say about this novel is that I think Kafka uh, tries to describe a world of loneliness and absurdity uh, as felt by the modernist people. I put this novel in the beginning of this list because I think it is very important for us to ponder on the subject Kafka is trying to describe. The second classic book is The Importance of Being Earnest by Oscar Wilde, a very important Victorian play which sometimes categorized as a farcical comedy uh, which is a kind of a drama uh, for the purpose of entertainment uh, with absurd, ridiculous and exaggerated situations. But I think uh, the importance of being earnest is more than that. It is actually a kind of criticism of Victorian customs, traditions, uh, marriage and so on. The title of the story is very ironic and satirical as well. To be earnest means to be serious, to be well behaved and to be a good character. But what we have in the drama is that all characters try to be earnest, but their behavior finally is ridiculous and trivial, which is satirically important. The next classic is Of Mice and Men by John Stein Beck, one of the greatest classics of American literature which occurred during the Great Depression in the United States. The story is about the experiences George Milton and Lenny Small have in finding job opportunities and it is said that the story is based on uh, a true experience by Steinbeck himself. Of Mice and Men is one of the greatest novels in American literature and Steinbeck tries to put his characters in suffering, loneliness and problems to see how they can survive the situation and this makes it a kind of influential, realistic novel. The next book is another masterpiece by American literature, The Great Gatsby by S. Scott Fitzgerald. The Great Gatsby is perhaps the most American novel of all time and Jay Gatsby is perhaps the best character creation in the history of American literature because it influenced by American dream, American culture and American way of doing things and living. So The Great Gatsby may not be categorized as the world literature but reading it can be interesting because of its great characterization, the beautiful symbols Fitzgerald is using and the theme of love between Jay Gatsby and Daisy, which is beautifully depicted. I think everyone must read that. The next is The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. This novel really deserves that Nobel Prize in 1954. The Old Man and the Sea is the beautiful and the thoughtful and the amazing and 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 story of an aging fisherman Santiago who catches a giant marlin after a long struggle and then loses it to sharks. The important quote, a man can be destroyed but not defeated, is extracted from this novel. The novel is about the notions we must think about in our lives, uh, the concepts of struggle, defeat, victory, honor, death, and the great question that, is this life worth fighting for? Hemingway answers yes or maybe no. What do you think? The next classic we have again John Steinbeck and the great novella The Pearl. The themes of this novella is what we have usually in Steinbeck. I mean 
the idea of poverty, the idea of greed for wealth, the idea of family, the idea of struggle, and so on. The central character of the novella is Kino, who finds a valuable pearl, and instead of gaining wealth and becoming happy, he transforms into a savage criminal, demonstrating how greed and ambition can destroy innocence. The pearl stands as the central symbol of the story, which symbolizes hope as well as destruction. Finally, Dostoevsky, one of my favorite writers of all times, especially the brothers Karamazov, but I put notes from underground in this list because brothers Karamazov is both complex and long. And if you are going to talk about short classic books from Dostoevsky, notes from underground is the great choice. Uh, the brothers Karamazov may be your last shot on Dostoevsky. Notes from Underground is a first-person narrative in the form of a confession. Dostoevsky's vision in this novel is a kind of nihilistic attitude towards life. So the dominant philosophies of that time, including rationalism and uh, utopianism, are criticized by Dostoevsky here. The next classic is George Orwell's masterpiece, Animal Farm. The animal form is an allegory of communism, and specifically the events happen in Russia at that time. And Orwell brilliantly explains why communism doesn't work in practice uh, by using the allegory of animals in a farm. In this story, the animals rebel against the human power, and then the smart pigs take on more power, and by the end of the story, actually nothing happens and nothing changes about the conditions of animals in the farm. This is one of the interesting allegories of all time, which is uh, both philosophical and political, and you will absolutely enjoy reading it. The next classic is The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. One of the greatest works of English literature, this novella is considered by many critics as the defining book of gothic horror genre. This novel is highly concerned with the duality of human nature and that people can sometimes be outwardly good and sometimes very shockingly evil. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde are strange characters and they seem to be unreal, uh, symbolizing two poles of mind, the good and the evil. Stephen's novel is psychologically conscious and makes you think about yourself, your mind, and your behaviors. And it is one of the first classics to bring psychology to the fiction. The next classic, which I think is number 10, is The Turn of the Screw by Henry James. The Turn of the Screw is a gothic horror, an interesting uh, story about a governess who cares for two children after the death of their parents. After some time, the governess recognizes some figures coming to the house and she thought that the children might be haunted and the story goes on, which I'm not going to spoil for you. The story of the turn of the screw includes images of ghosts and scary scenes, but they don't seem to be supernatural, but they are realistically depicted by Henry James, which heightens the tension of the story. Add this short classic to your list as well, I think you will like it. By the way, my name is Sohail, and if you are interested in topics related to literature, reading, literary criticism, and so on, hit that subscribe button to watch my future videos, and thumbs up for this video if you think it adds value so far. The next is A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, an extended essay published in 1929. Although many critics believe that this work is about the condition of women, and of course it is, I think this essay is more than that. A Room of One's Own is about a woman writer who is unable to write freely, and she has not a room of one's own. If we look at this picture carefully, it is not only about women, but also about men. So it is generally about human beings. They must look for themselves. So this idea of the self is general to human beings. I, I, and I think Virginia Woolf is talking about this. Every single person must fight to have his or her own room 
which symbolizes the free thinking and free thought. So don't forget to read this classic essay because it is very important in the history of literature and it also helps you to understand uh, Wolf's fictional masterpieces. The Stranger by Albert Camus is the next classic book you must read because when philosophy and fiction come together in a book, that book is worth reading without question or doubt. This is the first novel by Albert Camus, which is the story of the character Morceau, who kills an unnamed Arab man after his mother's funeral. This novel can be analyzed in the light of absurdism and also in the light of existentialism, especially in its final chapter. While you are reading The Stranger by Albert Camus, you may think that it is a simple work but it is a dense and rich creation full of undiscovered meanings uh, which makes it one of the greatest modern classics of all time. The next is, for sure, Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. It is a prose satire written in 1726 criticizing almost everyone and everything. Jonathan Swift satirizes not only human nature but also the very subgenre of travelers' tales. It is also considered as a work of children's literature. Gulliver's Travels also criticizes the political condition of that time in Europe. It published seven years after Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe, and it criticizes Robinson Crusoe uh, for creating optimistic view of human capabilities, because Swift believes that uh, human capabilities are destroyed and we cannot do everything we want. Jonathan Swift's style of writing is very comic and humorous and so you will enjoy this piece of classics. The next is by Leo Tolstoy, The Death of Ivan Illich, one of my favorite Russian classics. I read this novel 10 times and I enjoyed reading this masterpiece every time. You can really read this novel in one sitting and it will engage your mind for years. The subject of death, especially the hours before death and the experiences and sufferings of the man at that time is well depicted by Tolstoy and you cannot find something like that in the history of literature. By the way, Russian literature is my favorite literary taste and I learned a lot from the novels of this country. Be careful, because after reading this novel, you are going to think about death most of the times. The next classic is a German novella, Death in Venice by Thomas Mann. Death in Venice is the story of a writer who visits Mediterranean region, and there he encounters a beautiful and handsome boy named Tazio. He is attracted to this boy very much, but dare not speak to him. Despite the rumors about the cholera pandemic in Venice, the writer stays there and finally dies. This is a real story based on real experience by Thomas Mann. Death in Venice is a masterful blending of mythology, illusion and symbolism. And let me tell you that this novel is not that much attractive or interesting to read and you may not enjoy reading that, but it is thematically important, especially uh, in the light of Freudian psychology. The next masterpiece of classics is Candid, another philosophical book by an Enlightenment philosopher, Walter. Candid is the story of the character by the same name, Candid, who believes in the philosophy of optimism by his mentor, Professor Panglus. But as Candid experiences the hardship in life, that optimistic view and lifestyle disappears. This book criticizes various philosophical and religious theories and also shows that the world contains evil forces as well. But the final chapter is very enigmatic and the discussions about this novel are still contentious. The next classic is a kind of political classic, The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli. The Prince is one of the first works of modern philosophy, especially political philosophy, which acts as a kind of guide, as a kind of a structural guide for new politicians. 
Machiavelli is a strange writer because his language is very real and to the point and he depicts a world uh, that if you're going to be a powerful man you must follow certain rules and these rules may be non-human but they are real and this is what we are living with unfortunately if you have ever read the book 48 laws of power by robert green you understand what i mean by that because that book is highly influenced by machiavelli's political philosophy the next classic is also one of my favorite classic books the lord of the flies by william golding this novel is all about challenges and dualities in human relationships in this novel we have a group of young boys stranded in an island and they try to govern themselves so we have tensions regarding groupthink and individuality between rational and emotional reactions between morality and immorality the novel includes many symbols and references to the realities of human nature for power and for survival i highly recommend this book you will enjoy that the next classic is the awakening by kate chopin published in 1899 the awakening is one of the first novels that focuses on the women's issue probably the early feminism the protagonist of the novel edna searches for solitude and separation from society in a time when expectations for motherhood for social norms for marriage for gender and so on were dominant so it is normal that she faces lots of challenging in that society and she has a tragic end by the end of the novel but kate chopin believes that uh, she's victorious and she reached that self and she awakens uh, from the society and she teach us something uh, about ourselves this is very related to a room of one's own by virginia wolf edna takes over what she has agency for her body and her self the next classic masterpiece is the wasteland by t.s Eliot. i was not sure whether to put this poem on this list or not but finally I put it because it is a very important poem in the history of English literature and a great classic for modern literary criticism. Wasteland is a short poem and has 434 lines which is divided to five sections. This poem is describing the wasteland of modernity after World War I and the atmosphere of the era which is filled with despair and disillusionment. If you are new to the classics or if you are going to start reading classic books, don't start with the Wasteland because Wasteland is a very complex and obscure poem which is the essence of modernism and lots of uh, modern literary works are influenced by T.S. Eliot's The Wasteland. And the final short classic novel is Things Fall Apart by Chinu Achebe which is his first novel. If you are interested in colonial and post-colonial topics, this novel is a great choice which depicts a life in Nigeria and the invasion of Europeans to this country during the late 19th century. Things Fall Apart is a milestone in African identity, nationalism and decolonization. These were the 21st short classic books I wish I've read sooner in my life and I recommend you to read them because reading classics especially those which are influential and important in the history of literature leads you to a better understanding of all kinds of literature in general thanks for watching take care